Hey, it's Gigi the Gadget Goddess, and it's more like a confessional premiere. I've been keeping a secret, a big secret. So before we get into the video, I just want to apologize to everybody for keeping this secret. Let's get into the video. I am unboxing this today. But I'm going to make an effort not to share this with you guys until I've had the phone for a decent amount of time and can give you some honest reviews on how I feel about it. Today, I'm just going to unbox the phone and later I will add my first impressions and much later you'll get to see this video. For now, I have the Mi Mix Fold that I need to do more coverage on. Z Fold 2 which is going away and I have the Huawei Mate XS. I'm going to delay putting this video out because people are so antsy. Which one do you like the best? They ask me a lot of questions and I like to give an honest opinion on things and to do that I need time. I cannot have a device for 24 hours and tell you it's the greatest thing since sliced bread because that's not an honest opinion. Out of all of these devices I've had the Z Fold the longest. As of now, after using the other two devices on this table, I will not miss the Z Fold. By the time you see this video, it will not be in my possession. I will not own it anymore because there's a lot of money sitting on this table right now. Every device on this table was paid for, not financed, not given to me. So these are my honest opinions based on money I spent. I am not a huge channel. I am an honest channel. Foldables have been my thing in 2021. If you're enjoying that kind of thing, you might want to subscribe to this channel. <laughs> Let's get started. I'm going to try to accomplish a lot of bit of stuff in a little bit of time. I am the mat lady. This phone came with outer screen protector, but nothing on the inside. But even the outer screen protectors that the seller installed are glossy. Your girl don't do glossy. Y'all got to get rid of that. But I'll try to show you some things that are in the box before I install screen protectors and camera protectors. Okay, it's like the accessory box here. If I can get the accessories out of the accessory box. Oh, okay. Here are headphones. This is a 66 watt adapter. Ooh, Xiaomi got 67. Well, we got 66 and there's your charging cable. And here we have the case. I include a case with a kickstand on it. So I'll just let you know that uh, this isn't a big deal to me because it's a one piece case. And you know I go all out for my phones. I do have a case already. <laughs> Sim injection tool is also in that. I think that is it folks. Put these things back in this box, get this box out of the way and install protection on the device because that's what you do. Day one, you install protection. I'm also going to stick this on the charger. So when I start installing Google Play services on this phone, it'll be ready to go. Yes, I'm going to put native Google Play services on this device. I think we're going to get started with this process. The uh, Putting Google Play on is gonna be another video. Isn't that a pretty pearl finish? It came with two cents, I believe. Is there no back? I wanted a back. Y'all know I've done a million of these, so I'm not really nervous about it. Close that other one up and save it for later. I also have a camera protector. Initially, I thought they sent me the wrong one. Cheated and opened it up so I know it's the right one. So we have one camera protector, we have one for later. I'll put the other one in this same box. So if we're switching out anything, we can switch them out together. And just like that, we've protected our camera bump. So let's take a picture. Flash is on. It's not the best of pictures, but we didn't get a blowback. That's just really weird. I guess it took it like it was dark mode. If you didn't know what I was looking for on there, I was looking for a ghosting effect. I experienced that my fold 
camera protectors or the one I bought. And then I bought one from White Stone Dome. Well, no, it was gifted to me. Shout out to Jay Williams who gifted me the camera protector for the Z Fold 2. It was the only one that I could find that did not cause ghosting. Let's get started on the installation of the matte screen protectors for the inside and the front of this phone. Not too bad on this front piece. I do want to tell anybody watching that's like she just flew through that and did not explain any of it. I will leave video card for the installation on my Z Fold 2, which was very detailed. It's the same process and a quicker process than the Z Fold 2 with a little explanation of my installation on the Mi Mix Fold. I'll card that here. So you'll have both of those if you want to reference those, but it's the same exact installation and they're both matte screen protectors. And as I say in those all the time, you'll get a couple bubbles and usually I can knock some of these out, you know, while I'm doing it. But at the same time, within 24 to 48 hours, they'll be all gone and I'll do after pictures, of course. And I'll show you what it's like when I finished the whole process before, but I've done these a lot of times and I really don't have issues doing them but this is what our front screen looks like so far I love the matte finish it's not gonna have any fingerprints like a glossy finish would have so let's continue on to the inside can I just say so this is probably the best job I've did on a foldable first placement and really don't have too many bubbles. I picked up some fur from, <laughs> and I'm thinking I know where that came from. I have a furry set of linen, like my pillows and comforter and everything is really furry on my bed right now. And that's probably where that came from. But with the screen on, I really can't see it. But I don't really think I've ever had anything that perfect without bubbles ever installed on the phone. Now looky here, we're back. First, let's just look at this phone, right? This phone, of course, if you haven't heard, it's got a wedge kind of design to it, to where all your weight is placed on the right-hand side, which works out fine for right-handed people like myself. If you're somebody like some of my people, some of my close family members, and you're a lefty, then it feels off balance when you hold it. Great magnets in this phone. Probably some of the strongest magnets that I've used in a foldable device. Cameras. Cameras is probably what got me here. Gosh, it, it's a struggle to get this thing open sometimes. It's not a one-handed move, I will tell you that. You typically want to have two hands when you're going for this device. This is the Huawei Mate X2. As if you didn't know, I know you knew that already. It was released on February 25th. This is June. I said I was gonna wait the next year, but I just could not make myself wait on this phone. This phone folds out to eight inches when you open it. Same device when it's closed is 6.45 inches. It's not a slouch close. It's a wonderful beast when you open it up. I am using this currently on T-Mobile. I know it can be used on AT&T. I would not recommend it if you're on Verizon or Visible Wireless or somebody like that. So I had to drop the umbrella because the bugs are starting to get to me. So if it looks like it has a pink twinge to it, that's because my umbrella is red. I'm sorry about that. Oh, I see the mirror in that camera. That's pretty neat. You see the mirror in that camera? Wow. Huawei didn't slouch like a lot of other companies did. When it gave you your cameras, it gave you a 50 megapixel wide angle. It gives you a 12 megapixel telephoto lens. You get an eight megapixel periscope telephoto lens and a 16 megapixel ultra wide. All of that is stored right back here. A little bit of the reason why you get this stacked look back here. I still don't think it sits as high as my Z Fold did. Your video back here is going to give you 4K at 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. Your selfie shooter is a 16 megapixel. 4,500 milliamps is the same battery size we got in the Z Fold 2. The biggest battery that 
I've reviewed on a foldable device is on the Mi Mix Fold. The Mi Mix Fold outlasted every foldable device that I've had. This phone still gets better battery life than the Z Fold 2 did, even though the battery in the Z Fold 2 was the same size. As we've said before, optimization with Samsung phones typically isn't the best. Huawei does that over aggressive thing where you have to go in and tell it, hey, I wanna give these apps permission to pull from my battery life. I've done that. And after doing that, I'm still getting good battery life. I get uh, two days, sometimes a little bit more than two days, but most of the time, just two days. Nothing like the Mi Mix where it's like, eh, two, three, sometimes we can squeeze five. My fingerprint scanner is built into the home button here, but I also have face unlock. So if I hold the phone up, it unlocks. You see how fast that happened? I'm gonna go into YouTube. Speaker quality, speaker sound. I mentioned that because on the Mi Mix phone, regardless of what part of the screen I covered, because it had speakers on top and the bottom, I still got half of the sound. Although I have speakers up here, it's like your little teeny speakers that are gonna give you a little bit of the sound, not bottom speaker here. So it's still some coming out of the front here. I can tell you just from that example that music is not only coming out of this top speaker, but it's coming out of your ear speaker, the same one you use to take phone calls. The only thing I would say missing on this device is the ability to run a launcher and have an app drawer. I don't have an app drawer because it's the Chinese variant, so all the apps are on the screen but I typically don't go to the other screens. I use everything that's down here in folders or I swipe down and do a search when I'm looking for something. That's my default for iPhone as well. I don't have a bunch of apps on my screen there. The app library, I think is what iOS calls it. I prefer the Huawei Mail. So if I go into more, everything's default, even the email. I have deleted Gmail off of this phone altogether. Another plus is being able to turn on and off with 5G. I don't have a really strong 5G connection out where I live. When I'm at work, I do turn on 5G, but even though I have flipped that switch to turn on 5G, it's still showing 4G for me out here. So I'll turn it off. Cause it's a waste of battery. You don't want your system always looking for a 5G signal when you're not getting good 5G coverage. This phone is not gonna be for your quote unquote average consumer. The work I put into this phone so it works the way I need it to work is for a very advanced user or somebody who enjoys playing around with their device. Breaking their device and bringing it back. Yes, I've done that, but not with this phone, but I'm that kind of person. That being said, just like on the Mate XS, I do not recommend that anybody purchase this phone for their only phone to have to tinker with it to get alerts to have to tinker with it to get apps that they might need. Me, I'm just crazy. I will still have somebody slide in my DMs and say, hey, should I get this phone? I really wanna try it out. If you're not advanced enough to flash ROMs, if you've never stepped into that realm of Android to where you were tweaking your phone, then no. Don't even invest 2,000. Don't invest that much money to have to put work into a phone. This is YouTube, this is what I do. This is what I do for fun even before I started YouTube a year ago. I was the person that said, hey, you told me I can't do it, I'm gonna prove to you that I can. If you're that person, knock yourself out. Sell a couple phones, cause that's what it's gonna take. It's gonna take you selling a couple phones, cause you can't finance this. This is a Chinese phone, only sold in China, so you got to come out of your pockets with the full amount. This is the point where I come out and ask, hey, what do y'all wanna know about this nifty phone? Other than those who always ask how much it costs, which I didn't get a deal on this one. I am the deal queen, but I didn't get a deal on this one. I'm sorry. I name all of my devices. So when they plug into the car, they have these nice little names. The Mate XS was named Sexy Flexi. This is Double X, Huawei X2. If there's anything else you wanna know, links are in the description for where I got my tweaks. I will do a comparison between this and the Mi Mix Fold camera comparison wise. Like I said, the other two foldables are gone just because I have to live. 
So I wanted to give you some specs, give you some likes and dislikes. I've had this phone, what, longer than a week. <laughs> but I told you, I wanted to give you real analysis, real use, real experience with this phone before I came back and said anything or I gave my first impressions because I am part of this whole fold thing that's going on. Screen protectors came out fine. Inside turned out well, as you will see on an upcoming video about another case that I got for this phone. I did get a back screen protector so I can show off some of that beautiful white finish on this phone. Let's talk about this phone. Okay, being I've used so many folds this year, every foldable I can get my hands on. The Galaxy Z Fold 2, I mean, I didn't have the first fold from Galaxy. The second fold I was able to get my hands on was the Huawei Mate XS. Both of those phones are gone. And the Mi Mix Fold from Xiaomi. Those are all the phones I have possessed. And I have to say, hands down, this is the best fold out of all of those. Hands down. I say that, and I have to preface it by saying, I have Google Play services running natively, completely on this device. I also have all push notifications working. Number three, I have RCS running on this phone. Google messaging works with the chat uh, functions working as well. I am not missing out on anything unless you count the one thing that I think I've been missing out on. All of these phones but the Z Fold 2, and that's launchers. But I don't typically use launchers too much. If you're running a Chinese variant of a phone, you're not allowed to use launchers. You have to use the default, whatever skin is on that phone. Although I did pick up another case for this phone, I have found myself liking the Huawei case. That's oh only a back. I'm gonna go ahead and jump out the window and do what everybody says not to do. It is June. And I'm already saying this is gonna be my phone of the year. I really can't see, even though the Z Fold 3 is coming out, the specs that have been leaked have not really made me feel warm and fuzzy inside about what's coming with that phone. I really think it's gonna be a baby step up from the Z Fold 2, which I had no problems getting rid of first out of the Fold Brigade. Out of all of my folds, that one left first. I don't like money sitting around. Bigger YouTubers, they can keep phones forever. I buy to sell. For me to be able to afford to have this phone, I had to get rid of two phones. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense, but I like what I like. I've always been one that favors Huawei devices over other devices, and then be able to use said Huawei device with native Google Play services and all my push notifications which I will link you to because I tried my darndest to make you a video to show you how to install native Google Play services on this device. I like to concentrate and make sure I'm not messing up my phone, that it's hard to record and do those things at the same time. It probably doesn't make sense to you listening to it, but my focus is my phone at that time. Some of these processes sometimes take up to an hour. So a lot of people speed up the processes when they upload them to YouTube. Link in the description. A system hacks is one person that I got the native Google Play services for. Even after getting that and upgrading to MUI 11, push notifications started to get kind of wonky. My Mate XS would get some. The Mate X2 wasn't getting any alerts. So it was kind of like having a phone without alerts unless you got a call or a text, which was pretty useless, right? I found throughout the forums developer that developed a software to make it so push notifications would work. I will say that it's not like he's giving this software out for free. I get it, he created it, he's trying to get paid for it. He's not charging you an arm or leg. One thing you can always do whenever you have to put Google Play services on a phone to see if your push notifications are work, there is an app that tells you whether your push notifications are working. And when you get all of the check marks up, you know, your apps are pushing and then it tests out a push notification. And there's my alert. My alerts are all working. All social media, all email, all text, etc. Google Play services is running. Just to show y'all that that's a thing and it works. A lot of people have found a way to get push notifications to work, but their Google Play services gives them a lot of errors 
So if you get a lot of errors and you have to freeze the Google Play Store, it's not functioning Google Play Store. Uh, act like I'm gonna download uh, Wheel of Fortune here. It's pending, it's now downloading, and it's installing. So that worked. No errors. And uh, I'm gonna uninstall it because I don't wanna play Wheel of Fortune. I am using this phone on T-Mobile. I do know of people using it on AT&T. It's not a purchase I regret making. Yes, the phone is way too expensive. You're not getting this phone below retail. You are spending at least $3,000 to get this phone. Did I say that out loud? Yes, you are spending at least $3,000 to get this phone. I say all of that because I was the person pre-pandemic that didn't spend over $1,000 on a phone. The Z Flip was the first phone that I spent over a thousand dollars on now we have this monster here if you had told me that two years ago i wouldn't have believed you i have just enjoyed this phone so much you know you get into something it's just like ah this isn't for everybody like people are going to be interested in this phone and why i got it or whatever i don't see a lot of people going out to buy this phone just because of how expensive it is the people who are into foldables like me are probably going to be like oh is it really worth that money no it's not worth the money but it's what i wanted if you start talking about flashy expensive luxury cars are they worth it do they do anything more than get you from a to z they do they get you a to z in comfort well this phone has made my phoning experience <laughs> a lot more comfortable it's gone back to what i'm used to and what i like is that worth that to me maybe i don't know but i know this phone ain't going nowhere it feels like a regular phone in hand iPhone is a little bit wider, but this is not like carrying a Z Fold. It's not like carrying a Mi Mix Fold. It's even better than the feel that I had from the Mate XS. The Mate X2. I do wish it was an outward folding fold though. People won't understand my love for the folding outwards. It's a different experience. I'll give you some more updates on this device since it is the main device. I did keep the Mi Mix Fold because first impressions for that phone were wonderful. I could have gotten rid of that. I probably could have sold it easier than I sold the Mate XS. I'm not ready to give up on that phone quite yet. The goal is not to have too many phones sitting around. I usually don't have two Samsungs or two LGs. And I definitely didn't want to have two Huawei's. To have a Huawei and a Xiaomi, both foldables, and to have my iPhone on my iPhone line I can go back and forth between these two phones. If I want to do some comparisons or whatnot, I don't really have fanboyism. I have bias now. I do like Huawei by bias, but I don't feel like all I have to buy are Huawei devices. I can experience other devices. Guess what I'm downloading right now? Listen to these birds, these crows. What is really going on out here? I am downloading Harmony OS as we speak. So look forward to more content about this phone. I look forward to carrying this phone. I look forward to taking pictures for y'all on this phone. It's like Christmas in June. I'm gonna wrap this up. I enjoyed making this video. The only part of this video I didn't enjoy was keeping it a secret from everybody I know. Usually I share with at least one person, but not a soul knew I had this phone. And I even had it around people. I had it in live streams. I had it out of town and it was just assumed that it was the Mi Max Fold when truly it was the Huawei Mate X2. But that just shows you how much people know about imports. They all look the same. Although one's black and one's white. Thanks for all that watch. Thanks for my subscribers. Thanks for my members who are extra special to me. Thanks for supporting my channel. And hey, we're on the road to 2K. If you'd like to find out how to become a member, click on the join button and see the perks or click the link in the description if you're on an iOS device. I'll catch you on the next video.